I'm really, yeah, interested. Clearly, as I've said about 50 times, um, I think... Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and today we're doing my spring TBR. So I have pulled 10 books off my shelves that I would like to read in the season of spring. I have decided to go with one non-fiction included in the 10 as well as one reread and then the rest of these books are books that I either just want to really prioritise to get them around to read in soon or they're books that I think would be really good to read within spring. I haven't... <laughs> hello bird i haven't done a spring tbr or a season tbr before but i think it's going to be really fun if i don't get to all of the books then that's okay but these are the 10 that i'd really like to prioritize throughout this season so let's get to it the non-fiction book is going to be a Life on Our Planet, My Witness Statement and Vision for the Future by David Attenborough. I haven't seen anyone talking about this book, but I really like David Attenborough. I like all of his TV series. The bird also seems to really like him, which I think is adequate actually, having a bird when I'm talking about David Attenborough, who has spent so much of his career in nature or narrating things. And that's why I think this book is gonna be a perfect pick for spring, having a nature themed non-fiction book. This is a book I picked up last year. I think I got it for five pounds. And I'm really excited to see what this is going to be about. I know it has beautiful photos in it, like absolutely stunning. And I'm just really intrigued to see what this is all going to teach us about our world and the things that are going on and maybe some of the things that we need to pay attention to. I'm intrigued and clearly the bird is happy with this pick if you can hear it. But yeah, let me know if you've read that one. I haven't heard, as I said, anyone talking about it, but I think it's gonna be a good time. The reread for spring is going to be Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mars. I really want to reread this series. I love this series, YA fantasy. It's trope filled, the first three books. I recently got these hardbacks. I love the fact that they've reprinted them in hardback with different covers. And my paperbacks have fallen apart, so I am replacing them with these. And yeah, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to dive into this world again. I love everything about it. This first book, we're following Selena. She is an assassin. She is the best of the best, but now she has to work for a king that she despises to gain her freedom. And it's just fun. Like I say, the first three books, hella trope filled, but then it gets so expansive after that. So yeah. This is definitely one that I want to focus on in spring and spring because it's a big ass series and I want to read it this year so need to get started. Then we have a load of books that I'm really excited by. One is a very new edition and that is Sinister Spring by Agatha Christie and of course I had to include it on my spring TBR. It's literally spring in the title and the cover is absolutely stunning, perfect for spring. This is a collection of short stories from Miss Marple and Hercule Poirot and Tommy and Tuppence and all the little detectives that Agatha Christie has created. I really want to continue on with my Agatha Christie journey and I love a good short story collection and this, as I said, the title, Sinister Spring. You can't have it and not put it on a spring TBR. That would just be madness. So yeah, very excited to give this one a try, just some classic mystery short stories. Continuing on with a short story and one that I picked for spring because of this beautiful cover is The Ladies of Grace Adieu and Other Stories by Susanna Clarke and this is going to be so good. I'm so excited to read this. I love Susanna Clarke's writing. She's one of my favourite authors. I just think it's absolutely fantastic um, and this one we have all sorts of different worlds and they're fairy inspired so it literally says on the back, fairy is never as far away as you think. Sometimes you'll find you you have crossed an invisible line and must cope as best you can with petulant princesses or vengeful owls, ladies who pass the time embroidering terrible fates or with endless paths in deep dark woods and houses that never appear the same way twice. The heroines and heroes bedeviled by such problems in these fairy tales include a coinciated Regency cler clergyman, an 18th century Juris doctor and Mary Queen of Scots as well as two characters from Jonathan Strange and Mr Norrell, Strange himself and the Raven. So of course I want to read it, it's a high priority to get to and I think this cover just shouts spring. A classic fantasy that I have been putting off for such a long time is The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is part one, The Fellowship of the Ring and I think spring's gonna be a really good time to start this one going off of the film we obviously start with the hobbits and they have such a beautiful 
place that they live it's just so lovely and cozy and I think springtime is going to be perfect for all of that like the cottagey feel and then of course it gets darker as our story goes on much like this lightning lightning lighting the 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 clouds and the sun are just <sighs> They're not playing ball with me. I've, I've actually tried filming this a couple times in a few different areas because the lighting is so bad today. But yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued. Although I do keep putting it off because of the fact that so many people say it can get really dense in places with J.R. Tolkien's writing. I may get the audiobook, the one that's narrated by Andy Serskis because I read the Hobbit that way and I really loved the audiobook so I'm thinking that that's going to be the way to go with this as well. It is also my 30 to read before 30 and that is coming up rather soon so I need to get this one read and uh, so onto the spring TBR it goes. Then we have a couple of sci-fi starting off with Ocean's Echo by Evrina Maxwell and this is one that I'm really looking forward to and I think this romance that's going to be in here is a nice way to segue from spring into summer. I do see summer as a time for a lot of romances like a lot of people. So I think I'm going to read this one towards the end of spring. But this one is a sci-fi which again is a genre I'm trying to get into and it has a gay romance. We're following a socialite and a soldier and an unwilling bond between the two of them. It's going to be really interesting with really interesting setting. I'm really yeah interested clearly as I've said about 50 times and um, I think it's going to be an absolutely lovely book I haven't actually heard many people talking about this one but like I say I do think it's a good one to go from spring into summer and hopefully I like the sci-fi elements of it the other sci-fi that I have is Aurora Burning by Amy Kaufman and Dre Kristoff I read the first one Aurora Rising last year ages ago and I did like it I thought it was just a fun time which again is why I'm choosing it for spring because I just see it as spring as we're finally getting out of of the horrible cold weather and we're having a bit more like light-heartedness and I feel happier and I just think that that works for this. Whether it does or not I don't know um, but in the first book we are following a flight because it's all set in space. There are a crew of misfits that have been put together and they get tangled up in a lot of politics and a lot of things start going wrong all centered around this girl called Aurora and they have to try and figure out what is going on and they get themselves into some sticky situations. It reminded me a bit like Guardians of the Galaxy in places and it was just fun. A fun time. So that's just what I'm hoping for in this one. We're gonna see whether I enjoy it or not. I liked the characters, I liked their different personalities and I liked the fact that in the books you get little databases of what's happening as well and I just I liked it. I liked our characters. I think they were a really fun crew of misfits that was just put together and I, I liked that so I'm looking forward to getting back into it. Three books left to go. One is a classic and I've gone with Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. Again spring, summer I start feeling I'm reaching for the lighter classics like again I say more like romance and stuff not the horror gothic classics those I like to read in autumn and winter but in spring it's time to bring out some of the lighter ones and this one I feel like is going to tick that box. We have, in this outlandish, outrageous triumph of scandal fiction, a new Lady Orderly arrives at the manor. Young, beautiful and very mysterious. Why does she behave so strangely? What exactly is the dark secret this seductive outsider carries with her? A huge success in the 19th century, the book reveals an anti-heroine with her good looks and hidden past who embroidered perfectly the concerns of the Victorian age with morality and madness. I think it's going to be a good fun time. And the last two are fantasy books. We have Lady Hotspur by Tessa Grattan. This is a book I've been putting off for absolutely ages and ages and ages but I do think it's going to be a good time. I don't know why I keep putting off. This is a Shakespeare reimagining I feel like it's a couple of different Shakespeare stories um, and Tessa Grattan's reworking them and she does like gender twists and stuff on the roles. I'm really excited. I did read The Queens of Innes Lear which is a King Lear retelling and it's done from his daughter's perspective and I really enjoyed it, really enjoyed the writing. So I do think I'm really going to enjoy this one as well and this one we are following a few different people. We have Prince Banamora is faced with an agonising choice abandoning her claim to the throne or take up arms against the new heir, her childhood friend and former protector, Hal Bolinbrook. 
I mean, I just think it's going to be a really fun time. I think it's going to be really well written, but I do also know it is a bit slow and dense in places, as much as I still enjoyed the writing styles. So that's the reason why I've been putting it off, because as much as I think I'm going to like it, I know it's going to be a slower read. And then the final book I picked for spring is, well, because of this cover. I mean, it's just stunning. Beautiful colours. This is a book that I picked up because of Abby. I'll have her channel linked below. She's spoken about this series so much that it's convinced me to give it a try. And that's The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. This is the first in a quartet of the Dandelion Dynasty series, and I'm really, really intrigued. I don't think it's going to have anything to do with spring in it. I don't think it's going to be light-hearted or any of the emotions that I attach with spring. But the cover is shouting spring to me and so that is why it's on this list. It is an epic fantasy and we have a wily charismatic bandit and a vengeance sworn son of a deposed duke cross paths and they each lead their own rebellion against the emperor's brutal regime. Together they will journey to the heart of the empire witnessing the clash of armies, fleets of silk draped airships, magical books and and shape-shifting gods. Their unlikely friendship will drastically change the power balance of Dara, but at what price? I think it's going to be a really good time, and like I say, that just screams spring to me, so I'm hoping I will like it, but it is a chunky one. I think out of the whole TBR, these are the two I'm probably going to put off the most, just because of how chunky they are, but I'm also really challenging myself to actually read them this spring, so... There we are, let me know. Have you ever done a spring TBR or season TBR? Is it something that you would consider doing? And do you actually attach books with seasons? I do, weirdly. I have different genres of books that I will attach to different seasons. I feel like it's quite a common thing really because I feel like moods change with the seasons. So like when it gets into autumn, I just want to cozy up with like some mysteries and um, some darker gothic, especially when you're going into from like Halloween into winter. I want the darker gothic reads and then we come into spring and summer and I suddenly want the lighter and I want some romance and I want some things. Obviously that is still mixed in with the usual murder mysteries and fantasies and stuff because that is just the genres I like but I feel like the tone of them changes throughout the year. But maybe that's just me and maybe I'm just weird like that which is absolutely fine as well. <laughs> but yeah that is my spring TBR. I hope you like it. Let me know if you've read any of these, if you want to read any of them, uh, all those usual things. Let me know in the comments below. I think for this video, let's put the emoji of the spring like blossom flower. It's a pink little flower. If not, then just put a flower. That's absolutely fine. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have enjoyed, please do give it that thumbs up, subscribe and comment to let me know that you're here. Those three things are so important to helping this channel grow. As always, my social media link and anyone I've mentioned will be linked below. And I will, of course, catch you in the next video.